Hello students, this is Mr. Allen here. Today we are going to kind of wrap things up with our last review lesson before the AP exam. And what I've done here is I've actually combined the first few units together. I think it's the first four, um, which are, I think are probably the easy, easiest of the bunch, but nonetheless. So um, this review includes units one through four. Go ahead and get started. Again, I'm gonna to try to keep this around 10 minutes. So my first example here says identify and classify the discontinuities. So on this particular problem, oops. On this particular problem, this is f of x. And f of x can be factored as two times a quantity x plus two on the top. And then the bottom, you could factor out a common factor of three, and then you're gonna get two minus x and two plus x. So we can see that when x is equal to two, and when x is equal to negative two, we've got some issues. Now it turns out that the limit as x goes to two of our function f of x is infinity, or you could say d and e. Therefore, this is a non-removable discontinuity, non-removable. The limit as x goes to negative two of f of x uh, this one turns out to be, I believe it was one sixth, because you would cancel, you would cancel these two guys, and then you would plug in your negative two, and you'll get one sixth. So therefore, this one is a removable discontinuity. Okay, so that's example one using limits. Example number two, they're asking us to consider the following limit. And they want us to figure out which values of A will make this guy, well, the limit equal to D and E, the limit equal to zero, and the limit equal to 10. What the key concept here is, is we we'll note that this limit is going to infinity. And if that's five, well, if A is five, then that limit will be equal to the ratio of those coefficients over 10. So there's your answer for part three. If A is less than five, in other words, if let's say A was let's say three, then the bottom um, polynomial has a higher degree. Therefore, the limit there would be equal to zero. So that answers the question for number two. And then of course, question number one is any A value greater than five that limit is going to be infinity or d &E. So there's a couple of limit questions. The next question is about the formal definition, using the formal definition of derivative. So if you recall, oops, this is g, g prime of x would be defined as the limit as h, x, as h goes to infinity of f of x plus, oh goodness, I'm doing a horrible job on this one. Let's try that all again. I'm gonna erase everything on this slide. <laughs> so g prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. So to find g prime here, we're just going to do a substitution. Goes to zero. So we're going to have on the numerator, we're going to have five over two x plus h squared minus one. And then we're going to, and I'm going to do this in a separate color to emphasize a separate. I'm going to minus g of x. So then I get a minus five halves x squared minus one. All of this is going to be over h, and I'll let you guys do the work here. And after some work, you're going to find that this is going to give you the limit as h goes to zero of the quantity.
quantity 2x plus h, which of course is 2x, which as you guys know using the shortcuts, that would be the derivative. So the next example is using the quotient rule. So we're trying to find k prime here. So what is k prime? Well, the shortcut rule is low d high minus high d low over low squared. So k prime is going to be low, which is one plus e to the x times the derivative of high. Well, the derivative of negative two is a zero minus high, which is negative two. And then the derivative of the denominator there would be e to the x over the quantity one plus e to the x squared. The top cleans up to just two x, two e to the x. And the bottom is just its, itself. And that's by the quotient rule. So now I've got a relate, uh, rates of change question, and it says a ball is tossed into the air vertically from the ground, uh, from ground level and then returns to the earth in eight seconds. And find the initial velocity and the maximum height of the ball. So the uh, key equation that we're gonna use here is this, and that is S of T is equal to one half. I'm gonna write A of T squared plus V naught of T. A, let me do that in a different color. A is going to be the gravitational constant for Earth. And in this case, uh, that number is going to be negative 9.81 meters per second. Um, and then we're trying to find this. So that's the first thing we're going to have to do. So I claim that um, after four seconds, the ball is back on the ground because that's what it says. So that has to be equal to one over two times negative 9.81 times t squared. So that's going to be four squared plus v naught times four. So you can now solve this equation and you'll find that v naught is 19.62 meters per second. Now you would use your calculator to figure that out. Um, th this is the only unknown, so you just solve that. And I'm gonna leave the second part of that question to you. The second part of the question is, is what was the maximum height? I will let you figure that out. I've already figured out what V naught was. Shortcut rules multiple. So here we've got a couple of things going on here. We're gonna need the multiplication rule and we're gonna need the chain rule. So again, we're doing more differentiation. So I'm gonna use a different color of red here. So F prime, oh, multiplication rule, remember is one D two plus two D to D one. So this is one and this is gonna be two, okay? So one is x times the derivative of two. Now to do the derivative of two, I have to do the chain rule. So you do the derivative of the outside, which is sine, and I believe it's gonna be negative sine. Leave the inside alone. And then times that by the derivative of the inside. And I think the derivative of one minus three of the x, or one minus three x is negative three plus, so again, we're doing the product rule here. So the second thing is cosine of one minus three X. And then the derivative of X is just one. So then you can clean this up and you will get a final answer here of three X sine one minus three X plus the cosine of one minus three X. So that's your first derivative. If we wanted to find the second derivative, we would have to do it again. We would have to do the chain rule here, and we would have to do um, the product rule again here. So that would give us f double prime. I'll let you figure that out.
we're getting close to the end though. So I want to get this last example in, which is a related rate question. And it says a revolving uh, light located five miles from a straight shoreline turns with a constant angular velocity. What velocity does the light revolve if the light moves along the shore at a rate of 15 miles per hour when the beam is 60 degrees from the shoreline? So we know that you know this light's moving in this direction and it's going uh, 15 miles per hour. So hopefully you can see that this is a right triangle and we're gonna somehow relate these three things and so my hope is, is that you recognize that that's the tangent of something, which would be the opposite side over the adjacent side. So in this case, we could say that the tangent of theta is equal to, and we don't know what that opposite side is. So if you guys don't mind, I'm just gonna call this side up here. We don't know what that distance is. We know that the rate at which it's moving is this. We do know this length here, and that's five miles. So then what we're going to do, since this is a related rate question, is we're going to actually do the derivative. So the derivative of tangent theta, well, that would be secant squared theta d theta dt. And then the derivative of the right-hand side is going to just be one-fifth dx dt. <clears throat> so at this point here, we've pretty much got it knocked out. We just got to plug and chug some things in here. First of all, we can put 60 degrees in for our theta. And then this, this amount right here is that dx dt. And the only left, the only thing left unknown is the d theta dt, which again, I'm going to let you figure that out because that's what the question's asking for. I've done all the work in the setup and we are at 12 minutes. So I am going to stop it there. Uh, so that is my uh, quick review of units one through four.